we go all night, yeah We got that fight, yeah A future look nice, yeah A future look bright, yeah A future look bright, yeah Today, we have Mark, one of the owners of Urban Harvest Brewery in Walker's Point. Hey, Thank Brittany. you for coming on the show, Mark. Thanks for having me. Happy yeah, to be here. We're happy to have you. Um, so, uh, I know Walker's Point Fest is actually happening this weekend, isn't it? It is. Are you guys yeah. doing anything special for that? Uh, we are not. It, it doesn't come quite all quite the way as far, south as, as But the people brewery, can but still walk down the street right, and visit. It is Walker's so. Point, yeah, so I they mean, really it, should walk. They should. They right? should walk. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we're really happy to have you here today, Thank guys. Um, we've got a lot of different beers to talk about. We're going to learn about the history and whatnot. Um, so let's kind of start uh, from the... How do you know Steve? Steve's one of the other owners. Hi, Steve. Yeah. Hi, Steve. <laughs> well, first, cheers. Yes, cheers. You're right. How did I forget that part? <laughs> Were you and Steve like friends in college? Did you co? How did this all happen? So Steve and I have been been friends for wow over twenty years. We've been uh, friends for a long time now, and, and actually, beer is one of the things that uh, tied us together. We uh -huh. both love craft beer. Okay. So uh, back in the nineties, <laughs> what, what did you say? The nineties? <laughs> uh, there wasn't the kind of selection that that we have now, and you couldn't just go to your supermarket or to the liquor store and pick from a hundred different craft beers. You had to travel a little bit, okay. And so mm -hmm. one of the things you would do is we do road trips and, and, <laughs> and discover really cool, fun places to find good craft beer. Uh huh. Wow. Yeah. So it has been a passion for a long time, then. It has. So yeah. then, okay. So when did that passion turn into like a goal of actually having your own brewery? Well, for Steve, it's been a, a lifelong dream okay. to have a brewery. Uh, in fact, one of the uh, we we did a mountain biking trip out in Colorado one year, okay. and we went to uh, a brewery in the shadows of Coors in Golden, Colorado, and it was this little nano brewery type of thing that was kind of there before they existed, and they, they had kind of kettles in the kitchen, and it just had this really homey feel mm -hmm. to it, and it was kind of at that point we realized, you know what, we could probably do this someday, <laughs> yeah. and it took another 10, 15 years <laughs> after that, but... Uh, well, it takes some planning, I sh I'm sure, It takes but, a ton uh -huh. of planning, yes. So then, when did it actually, like, when did it start, like, actually things happening for you, like, yeah. making plans to have your own brewery? Well, we, we talked about it for some time. Okay. And so Steve's been a home brewer for the last 20 years or so. Okay. And one of the things I really appreciate about his brewing style is, you know, some people will brew and want to do uh, home brew and want to do something different every time. And that's mm -hmm. great. But one of the things I really liked about Steve's approach was, he would take a, a recipe, develop that recipe, and do it over and over and over okay. until he perfected it. Sure. So it was really kind of honing that craft until it was just right. Uh -huh. It's a bit of an obsession, <laughs> <laughs> but it works out really well because the beer's yeah, delicious. It does, <laughs> yes, the beer is delicious. So he had developed all those recipes, and he brews for his family and his friends, and I'm lucky to be one of those that has always yeah. been able to, to drink and, and try it. and. Uh, over the years, we just started encouraging him and saying, you know, you've got to do this. Your beer is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the other things that I really appreciate about his beer is that he brews really approachable beers. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily going to be too over the top with, uh, with hop. It's not going to be too over the top with any one particular, you know, fruit or different things. It's a beer that you can have one of, enjoy it, have another, and it just, it's refreshing and it's easy drinking. Cool. Well, actually, why don't we watch uh, the little video of us visiting Urban Harvest uh, in Brewery in Walker's Point. <laughs>
as you can see, their location is really nice. Uh, right on Walker's Point on 5th Street. What is the actual address? 1024. 1024. South 5th Street. Street. South 5th Street. Um, so yeah, you saw how beautiful of a location that is. Uh, I love all the wood oh, and the yeah. feel of that space. Uh, I like what you guys did with it too because it was a little different. You kind of rearranged some things. We did. Uh -huh. A lot of walls came down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a really nice location uh, and definitely yeah. special for that area too. Right. So. Yeah, when we uh, so when we took the space over, it, um, it it did not look like it looks. In fact, um, it uh, the south side of Fifth Street, um, the year after we uh, we signed the lease mm -hmm. was reconstructed. So <laughs> our first year of operations, we were going through some pretty serious road construction. Yeah, but I remember that stuff going on. Mm -hmm. well, so do I. <laughs> Oh, it was such a great time for you, awesome. right? Really wonderful time <laughs> having to deal with all that construction. <laughs> yeah, but now it's pretty much over, and it, it is really is, nice. It looks yeah, fantastic. the sidewalks are nice, the and city plus did now, a great job. yeah, now you can put tables out there to sit at, yep. and and that's nice too outside, especially on a nice day like this, right. you guys. I'm sure everybody's sitting outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but okay, so let's um, let's talk more about the beer again. Awesome. What was the first beer you guys made together? Oh wow, so. One of the very, very first beers that Steve did was an amber ale. Okay. And that's evolved into one that's on tap now called our Old Town Amber. Okay. Uh, in addition, we have, uh, I would say, maybe our Black Puppy would probably be one of our, our kind of older type of recipes mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, that's the one with the little... The, with the puppy the, on the it. The black puppy on it, I know. That's yeah. the, I feel like, how can you not like want to drink a beer that has right? a puppy on it? <laughs> as long as it's not made from puppies. No, they don't let us do that. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> you tried, huh? Right. It was, that was a lot against the rules. That's the, well, I'm glad that didn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's really cool. So then how many beers do you have now all together? So uh, we've got, uh, Steve has developed recipes for over 30 different types of beers, uh, and, and he keeps developing them as, as we go. Um, on tap right now, we probably have most I think we've ever had. We have okay. 16 on right now. Mm -hmm. um, we only do have our beers on tap, so yeah. our place is also the only place that you can get our beers. So we don't distribute sure. yet. Mm -hmm. We're an on-site okay. tap room. Uh, so you can try all 16 of those beers. Yeah, and they do flights as well. Uh, you kind of saw in some of the videos there, they've got this really cute setup. I don't know if cute's the right word, but... No, cute's really definitely cute. the, is right it the right word. word. It's super cute. <laughs> but, um, that's what we were going for. That's what you're, yeah. Well, good, then I, I said it right. Uh, but yeah, you can get flights uh, and, and drink all different types, which is really nice as well. So you can really get a taste of everything that they offer. Right. Yeah. So um, how, how's business? It's great. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a, it's a, a lot of fun. So when we, we went into this, um, we were very modest in our approach. Mm -hmm. When you come into the space and you see the, the build out and you see the, the space in the theater, um, that's uh, all the work was done by us. So we, everything was done by family and friends. Wow. Um, so the you got build some good was, family and friends. We have then. some fantastic <laughs> family and friends. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you hear that a lot when you talk to people, well, anyone who has a business. It's always like, we didn't do this by ourselves. There's right. no way we could do this by ourselves. It's really important to have family and friends who help you along the way. It is, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I guess you did kind of mention the theater space. Yes. So let's kind of talk what kind of makes Urban Harvest mm. stand out from the other uh, breweries. Is Besides the fantastic beer. Besides the fantastic beer. Uh, they have a really cool theater space, and what was, do you know what this, was it a theater before you guys moved in? Like it, it was. I mean, so it was like a artsy kind of bar type thing, or? So the, uh, it, it was a, a theater, and it was called Theater Unchained, and okay. so when we, uh, when we first looked at the space, um, it was kind of hard to see what it is now, then, mm -hmm. but there's a 52-seat uh, theater that was in place, <clears throat> so when we started building out the space, we realized we didn't need all the space for the tap room. And so we decided to keep the theater and keep the live performance stage. And we are so glad we did. Yeah. It is such a unique, cool jewel of the, the site. Mm -hmm. um, because every Saturday we have live comedy, uh, Mojo Dojo, who I think you're going to be talking to. Yeah, we're talking to them next, you guys. Nice. So uh, tune after we're, Mojo yeah, Dojo. Turn in to, tune in to uh, see some real fun stuff. Oh, yes. So. So yeah. there's live comedy, uh, and Wednesdays they do open dojo. You'll hear about it from them, but mm -hmm. it's such a cool use and such a cool space to, to have that kind of a thing, yeah, and, and the it community. complements it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, bringing in more people from the community, like right. how is that a bad thing? It's not. Exactly. You know, you get to bring in a lot of people, and funny people. Who doesn't want funny people in their bar? 
<laughs> makes that it makes a beer taste even better than it already does, right? <laughs> actually, uh, from back here, uh, backstage, we're actually we're thinking like, yeah, funny isn't really that much fun to be honest. Oh, sure. Just joking. Sure. Hey, quick question Aaron, from. Uh, I can tell you, uh, you, you don't do improv right, or any comedy because you're not back, that funny. Back here with Milwaukee Live, but one of the things <laughs> that, that we were wondering is like, what's your what's your favorite beer? Mm-hmm. Both of you guys. Mm-hmm. Bud Light. Yeah, you like the Bud Light. Oh yeah, and the Miller gosh. Light. Yeah, those th- those yeah. are your favorite. Yeah. So so I don't uh, <laughs> I don't actually like to say that I have a favorite beer. Mm-hmm. So when somebody asks me what my favorite beer is, I would say I haven't found it yet, because there are so many beers to try. I don't think it's doing justice to any one beer to say you have a favorite and to kind of you know pigeonhole yourself into mm-hmm. one. Who knows? In three years, I'm probably going to have my new favorite beer. Next mm-hmm. week, I might have my new favorite sure. beer. And as far as our beers go, I honestly, I love them They're all, all favorites. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> funny funny story. I want to hear your favorite beer then. Sure. Is, um, I didn't I didn't used to like IPAs. Okay. When Steve and I started kind of doing this and he was brewing, he'd brew the IPAs and I'd be like, meh. And I I started, you know, warming up to him a little, but he brewed one that's called Corkscrew IPA. And it's a beer that he makes with Cabernet Sauvignon infused oak. Okay. And it is an incredible IPA. It's so unique. And I I now call it our gateway IPA because for those that come in and say, oh, I don't like IPAs, Mm -hmm. I give them a try of that and they're like, whoa. Oh, like maybe I do like IPAs. That's Mm -hmm. good. It's nice to have that beer too that can maybe like change some people's right. opinions about it mm-hmm. yeah because ipa can be so happy sometimes right. you know i think that's i'm kind of i'm kind of one of those people too who's like oh, i don't really like ipas they're a little too much like beer to me <laughs> 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 it's beer it's beer oh my gosh well i i actually i always drink the lemony wicket one nice basically i drink any of the ones that are kind of um more like fruity and not definitely not happy or dark. I tend to just always kind of go with a lighter color. Well, the blood ones. orange wheat's coming back in a few. Is weeks. it okay? Yeah, yes. that one was a really popular right. one. Yeah. Oh, also fun. Uh, I know that you, I've heard people say like when you um, what's is it tap the keg? What oh, is kick it? the keg. Yeah. Kick the, yeah. <laughs> kick the keg. You can like uh, you can enter to win a T-shirt or yeah. something, right? That's kind of a fun yep. thing. Yeah. No, nobody likes to see their beer half full, so it's something we do to to put some smiles on faces and say. You can win something. Yeah, I'm sorry I can't give you any more, but Here, now you can this. Yeah, possibly have a t-shirt. Right. Hey, another uh, quick question actually from Joel, one of the Facebook viewers was saying, um, or actually uh, Cooper was asking, how would somebody have a party at the brewery? Do you guys Ooh. do private events? We do, we do private events. Uh, we have parties there all the time when we're open too. Um, in fact, just a couple weeks ago, uh, there was a group that hosted someone's 40th yeah, birthday party. Yeah, I was there that night. I saw oh. it. They looked like they had a good time. <laughs> <a> good time. <laughs> <laughs> we we had a great time too. It, uh-huh. They were a very fun group. So, yeah, people can bring in parties when we're open during our normal hours. We've done special events. In fact, there was a, a rehearsal dinner that was hosted on, at the site, and oh, the, nice. the dinner was on the stage, and the reception mm-hmm. was in the the tap room area. So it's uh, yeah, just contacting well, that's us. That's cool. That's a fun idea. Yeah, yeah. So just contact them if you guys have any ideas of events. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a beautiful spot, uh, and I mean Walker's Point. I've talked about just like yeah. Walker's Point before, uh, not only because I live in that area, it is just growing so much. And that Fifth Street, I mean, you guys are there. It's going to continue to oh, yes. more and more businesses are going to be along that Fifth Street and other streets as well in Walker's Point. Like you guys definitely have a good spot to be in now, Yeah. you know, before it gets too crazy. Yeah, that's a really yeah, nice... Yeah, we we're really proud to anchor the south side of Fifth Street. There's so yeah. much that's going on along the entire corridor. I mean, there's... Brenner and Mobcraft and mm-hmm, all that. So. Mm-hmm. Was that just luck that you guys, did you just happen to find that that space was open for rent and you're like, oh, this is going to be it? Or Yeah, so that was, a, it was kind of a fluke. Okay. So we had probably, we spent two years looking for sites and okay. looking for a location we thought was going to be easy. You just, <laughs> you know, you get a warehouse, garage doors, you put in some kegs, mm-hmm. some bathrooms. It was the hardest part. Yeah, okay. Permitting was easier than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, what if, so the difficulties, I guess, would be finding the space. Finding the space, well, Have yeah. you run into any other difficulties running a brewery? Or, all uh, kinds. All, all kinds, kinds huh? But, but it's, it's all great because yeah. we were able to learn from people that had done it before us. Mm-hmm. So, so we, when, we, when we were getting really frustrated, we signed a couple of lease uh, intents to lease. Um, Steve was at, at home one night, and he was looking uh, at listings on Craigslist. Mm-hmm. And he came across a listing that said Walker's Point Opportunity, and it had a phone number. Okay. That was it. That was it? That was it. 
he tells me this, and I'm like, are you sure that you're looking at the real estate listings? Yeah. And he said yes. What kind of opportunity <laughs> <Right>. is this? <laughs> and so he went and he looked at the space, and it was the, the current space yeah. that we're in. And I'm so glad he did. It turned out fantastic. Mm -hmm. We have a fantastic landlord. She's incredible. Cool. And we, we love the space. Good. Um, so what... Uh, what makes you so happy about owning a brewery? Like, what, what is it that really feeds your soul and your passion about having this? Um, so I, I love interacting with people, mm -hmm. and I love trying to find beers that they like. Craft beer is a passion for me. It's a passion for Steve. And um, one of the greatest joys is having somebody come in and try a beer, mm -hmm. maybe not be sure about it, and then mm -hmm. I can just ask them a couple questions and to find that right beer that they might enjoy. Mm -hmm. And... You know, expose them to whole new different kinds of flavors. And yeah. It's, I really enjoy the interaction with people. I enjoy the, uh, the ability to, to share, really, what we do. That's great, yeah, because I, I know that every time I've gone up and tried a different beer, you guys are very generous in your samples as well. Like, yes. I'm not sure if I'm going to like that one. Can I try that one and that one and that one? Yep. <laughs> you know, like, and you do. You let us kind of figure out what is going to be the right beer for who you are. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's like hey, a candy store for grown-ups. Yeah. Quick uh, question from a YouTube viewer. Um, what are the mugs? It looks like coffee mugs. Yeah. Ah. I asked about it's that. It's not coffee. Um, <laughs> they, those are for our mug club. So uh, when we started the brewery, we do a mug club. So we have uh, 50 inaugural members. So because we started midway yeah, through the year. Yeah, how do you year, become a member? What is that? What is the process? It was the uh, it was first come first serve initially, okay. and the month of <laughs> uh, sold out. Uh, so we uh, will renew it every year. Mm -hmm. So if people are interested, uh, we have a waiting list for for next year, and they oh, can sign up for the nice. waiting list. And uh, so when you come in, you get to drink out of that mug. You get money off. You get all kinds of merchandise and, and extras along with it as well. Okay, because I definitely think I can. I mean, I'm there a lot uh, because not because of, not because I have a drinking problem, um, <laughs> but because uh -huh. I we're, we'll be you guys. I don't have that, but because uh, I do the improv comedy mojo dojo in that theater space that they they have, and I definitely know. I can picture a couple faces that I'm sure are part of that mug club. There's just uh, definitely this one guy that I feel like I see there all the time. I don't know how to describe him, but I, and I've even seen him wearing a t-shirt. So now I'm, I'm kind of like... it's Pancho. Is, you think so? He's kind of yes. like, he's a, a, a larger guy. Yeah. You know, he's got, yep. you know, so, he's got some presence. Brittany, are you a member of the mug club? I am not. I, I'm going to have to go on the yes. waiting every, list. Every time the viewers see you, they're saying that you're drinking No, that's, that is false. <laughs> It's it's just one of the benefits of this show, I think, is is basically what it is. <laughs> so Pancho, I'm glad you mentioned Pancho is is one of our neighbors, and okay. um, so what was really important to Steve and I when we found a space and we found a location was being part of the neighborhood, being sure. part of the community, getting to know our neighbors, and we have the most incredible neighbors. We love our neighbors. We love the community that we're in. We love the businesses that are around mm -hmm. us. We just feel like we're in such this fortunate situation mm -hmm. to be around all these great people, and so. Okay. Truly, uh, it's a, a great experience. Good. Is there anything else you want to talk about that I haven't? Is there any? We got uh, one more question. Oh, yeah, perfect. What's the weirdest beer you guys have ever made? Ooh, the weirdest. Oh, boy. So, I don't know about weird, but um, one of the beers that I enjoy the most is mm -hmm. one that we call a Chocolate Whiskey Imperial Stout. Okay. And... It's just this really big, really rich beer. We did it for Black Friday last year. Okay. Um, and then kind of a, another unique thing that we do is we do an espresso amber. Um, oh, so okay. one of the things that we both really enjoy, Steve and I love espresso beers, but when we were trying them, they were always stouts or porters, and we wanted an espresso beer we could enjoy in the summer. Mm -hmm. So Steve started playing with recipes, and he developed this espresso amber that's just really light, refreshing, not heavy coffee beer. and. Cool. I absolutely love that beer. It's like an iced coffee in a glass. Really? You can okay. have and it in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> is that one on the menu right now? It is. I should probably try now. that one. Get there now. Hurry, everyone. <laughs> but I, I'm going to probably have one on Saturday since I'll be there on Saturday. So, and so will you be. I but will be there. <laughs> <laughs> are there any other questions uh, th that people are posting about? Um, I think that's it for now. Everyone's just, I think they said they've run off to the brewery to get some drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, is there anything else you want to touch on? Any events coming up? Or? Uh, we do have our second annual Oktoberfest coming okay. up on October 14th. We call it our Octo Harvest. Okay. Uh, and, in fact, I know you had Cooper from Wicked Urban Grill Yeah, on. yeah, we did. Hi, Cooper. We love Cooper. Hey, Cooper. Yeah, 
Yeah, Cooper literally just commented and said he made a dessert with that uh, Imperial Stout beer that you guys are talking about. <laughs> yeah. Cooper makes Thanks, some Cooper. incredibly awesome stuff, and he's coming back for our, our uh, Octo Harvest oh, on good. the uh, 14th, so we're excited about that. Well, great. That's exciting for you. Well, thank you, Mark, for coming on the show. Thank you, I really Brittany. appreciate it, you guys. Thanks. So stay tuned. Um, so, you know, we talked about how they have a theater space uh, and that Mojo Dojo Comedy uh, does all types of improv shows, even comedy sketch shows. Um, so we're going to actually have James Boland, who is the artistic director of Mojo Dojo Company, uh, our comedy company, uh, and he's going to be on and answer any questions. So if you've ever thought about doing improv, or any kind of comedy, or you like to have like a date night, I mean, it's perfect for date nights. Friday, Saturday, they have it, and they've been doing so well for you guys. I mean, right. they've been selling out their shows, so it's a lot of funny stuff. And are I'm you asking me? Is that what this is but, about? Is that yeah, funny? are you busy on Saturday? <laughs> 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 well, we're super excited. Thank you so much for being on Thank the show. You, I appreciate it. And yeah, stay tuned for Mojo Dojo. They'll be on in probably like 10 minutes. So we'll see you next. Bye, guys. Bye. We go all night, yeah We got that fight, yeah A future look nice, yeah A future look bright, yeah